Hello traders, in the zone here with another video. Today's video is going to be trading with Floor Trader Pivot. Now, Floor Trader Pivots are very powerful price based support and resistance levels that are calculated using the prior day's high, low, and close. The Floor Trader Pivots have been around for decades. Basically, you have a daily pivot, which is calculated, and then you have three resistance zones above R1, R2, and R3, and then you have three support zones below the daily pivot at S1, S2, and S3. Now most modern trading software platforms today have this indicator in their library of indicators so you don't have to calculate these levels on your own manually. However, I've provided them here um, for you if you wanted to manually calculate these levels on your own. I have found that the best way to use floor trader pivots is for trend analysis and knowing which way the market is trending is key to knowing where your opportunities lie okay so let's say that the market is in an uptrend okay so we're going to look over here on the left hand side and we're going to see that we have a buy zone which is between the daily pivot and s1 okay with a target of r1 so if we have a bullish trend then we want to be looking to buy within this buy zone okay with our target again at, at r1 so the bullish trend will continue until price closes below s1 okay and another uh, point to make is that if you are in an uptrend you want to make sure that the open is above s1 and later on in the video i'm going to explain you know how you can use opens that are not above s1 in a downtrend okay a bearish trend you want to look to sell between in the zone between r1 and the daily pivot and you're going to be looking for a target of s1 or possibly s2 depending on how strong the the, the trend is and the bearish trend should continue until price closes back above r1 and again, if you're in a, in a, a bearish trend and a downtrend, uh, you want to make sure that the price opens beyond R1, uh, excuse me, below R1. So let's take a look at how this happens in uh, identifying the trend. You can see here on this chart that uh, the market was in a downtrend for five days in a row. And during that time, it found resistance between the R1 and the daily pivot. Now you can look down here and see in the bottom left hand corner the key for this chart. The orange line is R1, the blue line is S1, and the purple line is the daily pivot. Okay, So you can see that as long as price could not close above R1, it pressed down towards S1. So what you want to do is you want to take advantage of these opportunities by looking for selling opportunities within that zone between the R1 and the daily pivot. Now all good things must come to an end and this downtrend comes to a, an end with a close you can see here above the orange line above R1. So this changes the trend over. Now it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to go immediately into an, an uptrend. However in this example it did. Sometimes you can get a close back above R1 only to get a close back below S1 the following day. And if that happens, what you're likely to see is some sideways consolidation taking place until a true trend uh, reestablishes itself. Okay, the trend ended here with this close above R1 and now you're going to be looking for opportunities to buy between the daily pivot, the purple line, and S1, the blue line. So that becomes a support zone. Okay, so you want to look for your buying opportunities between that zone. So basically, the goal is when the market's in a downtrend, you want to sell in these zones. Okay, you want to look for your opportunities to sell in these zones with your target down at S1 until there's a failure. And in an uptrend, you're going to buy in the zone between the daily pivot and the S1 uh, until it fails. And the trend should stay to the upside until it does. Okay, so that's the way that I use the floor trader pivots to help me determine 
where I should be looking for opportunity and which opportunities I should be looking for. Now I mentioned before that you want to make sure that whichever trend you're in, if you're in an uptrend, you want to make sure that price opens above S1. If you're in a downtrend, you want to make sure that the open is below R1. Okay, so what happens if that is not the case? And sometimes it can happen even within an established trend. So let's say that you are in an uptrend and you are expecting for your target to be R1, but you're gapping above R1. Um, how do you play this? Well, this is what you call a, a breakaway gap up. And it's most powerful if you have been in a downtrend and then you're opening above R1. However, it'll still work in an uptrend if you're opening above R1. The, the key is if you're, if you're opening uh, sorry about that guys hang on a minute okay so what you're looking for is an acceptance or or a rejection at the R1 level okay and here's how I do it okay what you want to see is you want to see an open that occurs above R1 or R2 um, R2 is is really pushing it okay but you want to look for an opening that opens above R1 and then you want to watch for a test of R1 of that level that was surpassed okay so you're looking for a test sometimes it'll come and test it to the T sometimes it will not but you're looking for a test then what you want to watch for is you want to watch for the first bar of the day either a 10 or a 15 minute bar whichever you, you prefer I use 10 minute bars but you're looking for a bullish close you want that bar to to if you're looking at a candlestick pattern you'd want to see the bar to be green okay and then you're going to go long if price trades above that first bar and you're going to put your stop at the low of the day and this is how you're going to catch a breakout above r1 that's going to continue to 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 go now um you can see here that i like to see the gap occur beyond the prior days range and value also preferably just beyond the r1 i don't like to see it open too far beyond the r1 uh, the gap should occur um, no further than R2 and if it happens beyond two uh, you know I'll consider playing it but as long as it's not too far past R2 like I said if you're getting past R2 you're you're getting into um, some pretty rarefied air and uh, it doesn't work as well but it, it can okay and then what I like to see is a test or a touch at that level that was gapped over and then you want to see a sharp bar reversal like a, a a hammer pattern or, or something that causes the bar to close back near the high of the range now if you don't get that but it still closes bullish that's that's fine too but you're going to take that trade above the high of that bar and you're going to use the low of that bar as your stop okay it's a very safe way of, of taking a breakout now let's this is for a breakaway gap that's up okay now we're going to look at the same thing can be played to the downside again you're looking for an open that uh, happens below S1 or S2. Um, you're going to watch for a test of that S1 or that S2, and you're going to watch for the bar to be bearish. Okay, you want that bar to close negative, and then if you trade under that bar, you're going to go low, and your stop's going to be above the high of the day at that point, which is the first bar. And again, the same thing, like I said, on the upside, you want to see the the gap just beyond the S1 level and or the s2 level and you want to watch for a test of that level and you'd like to see in a perfect world you'd like to see a sharp reversal bar that closes back near the low of the range and then of course you're going to go low below that that bar and so this is how you play the breakaways when you have an unexpected open in the morning um, and you want to get on to the breakout early on so this is how i use the um, floor trader pivots Hopefully this will help you, you know, understanding what the trend is uh, by looking at the floor trader pivots and uh, help you find opportunities to make money. All right, guys, that's it. See you later.